question on recording maybe. So if you look at the pelvis, okay, so the pelvis is in terms of riding, probably one of the most important areas of the body to really get familiar with, because although we may think that it's one solid bone, actually there's lots of joints in the pelvis, and those joints mean that there's movement potential. And for a rider, that movement potential is essential for us to be able to absorb the horse's movement or the forces that the horse is generating underneath us. And it just helps us be more stable when those forces coming up into us, into our bodies. So if you look at the pelvis, I don't want to go into detail. I've got a lot of other sessions that talk about other areas of the pelvis. My focus for today and in this class is the hip joint. So <laughs> those that I can see on the camera, could you please point to your hip joints? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what tends to happen when that question is asked is that most people point to the big bones here. So that would be the bone at the front of the pelvis, you can generally feel it quite easily on ourselves. They're quite sort of big, big, big bone. But that's actually the top of your pelvis, as opposed to where the movement happens in the hip, which is the bit in the pelvis, which is our hip joint. So can you also find your pubic bone at the front? So that's right at the front, again, quite an easy bone to find. And if you look, there's your pubic bone, Quite close to that bone is the socket, yeah, the socket of your hip. So the hip socket is part of your pelvic calf. So on this side, I've got the, the ball joint in there. So there's the socket. And then my leg comes up and the top of my thigh bone, I've got this wonderful ball joint. So whatever is happening with this pelvis can help move the hip joint if whatever's happening with the leg will help move the hip joint and so we've got different ways in which we are able to move the joint we can move with the leg so we can lift and lower the leg we can circle the leg we can take the leg out to the side take the leg forward and back and that's moving the ball in the socket now, for most of us in our daily lives, apart from obviously walking, but if we're going to sit down and move around, and I'd say more so for my riders, how we move over in the hip joint is more that the pelvis moves over the ball joint. So the socket has to move over that ball joint. So we're going to play around with those. And remember, this is the level one of bar. So a lot of this is going to be laying on our backs. And if you're a rider, obviously, we're going to be more upright. But it's just a, a session that you can start to explore what movement you have in your hip. So there it is. And it moves like this. The first thing I'm going to get us to do is just stand and place your fingers onto your hip joint. Yeah, so you'll find that they're just, if you find your pubic bone just to the side, and then just lift one leg up and down and feel where that movement is happening, right in that deepest crease of your pelvis. The ball joint rolls back and forward, and then we can do the other side. Yeah, rolling the ball joint in the socket. So now we know where the hip joints are, and we kind of know roughly how they move. We move the ball joint in the socket. Now, how do we move the pelvis or the socket over the ball joint? So how we do that is we do is a hinge. So we move forwards, and then we come up. Now, can you see when I come forwards? I want to try and keep my back still kind of flat. Now, if you've got tight hips um, or tight hamstrings, 
you're going to find that movement of the pelvis really quite challenging. So how we can make that happen for us is to bend the knees. So if you bend the knees and hinge forward, you may find that you can move forwards over your hip joints without the back flattening. And this is one of the issues that riders have and in our day-to-day -day lives. If, for example, I was trying to, if I were to sit down, but I never had enough movement in my hamstrings or, um, sorry, my hips, what happens is my back tends to flatten. Yeah, they come under. And then that's how we end up being sat, yeah, which puts the movement into our lower back and not into our hips. So I need the hips to move so I can maintain good alignment of my spine. That might be getting a bit complex, but it is just something to think about how the hips affect the lower back. Now, just I have to mention this because it is very important. Whenever we come forward at the hips, our sit bones widen. And when I stand, they come closer together. So when my pelvis comes forward, the sit bones widen. And when I stand, they come closer together. We do that one more time. So when I move over my hips, my sit bones, they go wider. And when I stand and come back up straight, my hips, as my hips extend, my sit bones come together. Now what we're going to do is get your sit bones, hold the sit bones together, and now move your hip joint. On oh, sit bones, not allowed to move, but move your hip joint. Yeah, you physically cannot move in your hips unless you let your sit bones widen. And so if you've got a tight pelvic floor, we tend to move everything is in the back in here. Okay, so this is where the hips are related directly with our pelvic floor. Let's take it down onto the floor and just get some movement, thinking about the hips. So we're going to lay down on the back. If you are new to class and you want to have a cushion under your head, then that's absolutely fine. So we want to make sure that the chin isn't poking up, got the forehead parallel to the ceiling. So when we lay down, we're just going to have the knees bent. And we want to think about the ball. So from here, place your, again, place your hands on your hip joints. You can feel them in there. And the aim of this is to try and keep your pelvis still whilst we move our hip joints. And remember, this is a level work. So it's, we're going to keep everything nice and manageable. It's about exploring what movement you have. So if you think about your pelvic bones and your pubic bone, those are two those points we looked at earlier. Can you find them on your pelvis now? The hip bones and the pubic bone. And you want them to be roughly on the same level. So you can keep your hands there for feedback. And then you're just going to straighten your leg. And can you keep the pelvis still level? And then bring the leg back in. The other side, the leg stretches out and comes back in. So just lengthening, rolling in the hip joint, and then rolling the ball back. Rolling away and bringing it back in. The leg slides away. So this is more about stability for the pelvis. Can I move in my hip without my pelvis having to move two, yeah, so it's hip dissociation. Keeping the foot on the floor keeps us much more able to control the movement. We do one more on each side. Guys, make sure you're breathing when you do this. And then come back to center. So both of these are there. So you're now going to take the hip out to the side. Again, pelvis stays still. Can you open the knee out to the side? And then bring it back. Again, this is hip dissociation, so I want the pelvis to stay still, so the pubic bone, hip bones, 
Great, stay on the same level. And just let the knee open as far as you're comfortable. Just focusing on the movement happening in the hip joint rather than the whole of the pelvis moving. Yeah, to make it look like you've got a greater range or to make it feel like you've got a greater range. But really, we're just focusing on that hip. Let it open and close. The ball joint rolls in the socket. Nothing else has to change. Can you do that and still breathe? Good. And then bring the knee back to the center. Can you lift your leg up off the floor? Yeah, just move it in the hip joint and place it down. Do the same leg again. Can you lift it up and pop it down? So what might happen is the leg comes up, you might find that the back flattens. Okay, so we want to keep the pelvis still and roll in the hip joint. Coming in, the thigh comes in and the thigh moves away. The thigh comes in and moves away. Comes in and away. And that's just that ball rolling in the socket. Really bring your attention. Even put your hand on that hip joint. So you're really focusing, giving your mind that awareness of where the movement should be happening. Change the other leg and see if that feels any different. Check in, is your pelvis in the correct place? Or so when I say correct, <coughs> for the purpose of this exercise, the pelvis is staying still. Pubic bone, hip bones are staying at the same level. And I just want to move in that hip. So this should still be a fairly low level exercise. You might be finding, yeah, that the hip is a little bit stiffer on one side than the other. And just do two more. And then we can put both feet back down. So again, from this position, we can do some more mobilizing of the hips. But this time, rather than moving the thigh bone in the socket, we're going to move the pelvis. So we're going to move the socket over the ball. And we do that by tilting our pelvis backwards and rolling it forwards. So you see how I roll my pelvis forward, my arch in my back, <coughs> a little bit deeper as I roll forwards over my hip joints. And then I'll tilt back and my back flattens as I roll back. So you can just imagine the, the ball staying still and you're moving your pelvis over the ball joint. So just keep going with that movement. Make sure you're breathing. So for those that have got the video or the, if you're in the room and you can see, so you're lying down and you've got your foot bent. We're now just moving. I show you the side of the, so you're started here. The leg would be there. And then we're just moving the pelvis over or around the ball joint, tilting the pelvis back, tilting the pelvis forward. Yep, so if you're lying down from that view, pelvis forward, oops, pelvis back, pelvis forward, pelvis back. And obviously this is the same if we're sat up, we still need that movement. It's just easier to achieve it lying on your back because gravity helps us. Good, moving that pelvis back and forwards. Very good. So come to the middle so you're not tilted back and forward. And then we're going to just take a moment to bring our awareness to the breath. So inhale and release the breath out. And when you release the breath, lift the left leg up over the hip or knee over the hip. Yep. 
So again, we're just going to hold that leg there. And this time, we're going to stretch that leg away. So now we're starting to get a little bit of work in the muscles of the hip, stretching out, but the pelvis still needs to stay still. So when we move the hip, we're moving the ball joint in the socket. So now we're holding the socket nice and still to move the ball joint, rolling back and away, rolling back and away. And in and out and in. And we breathe. So this is more about an awareness of where the hip is. Feeling the movement of your hip joint without the pelvis movement. Hip dissociation. Two more. And one more. Good. Bend the knee and pop the foot down. Then we take up the other leg, knee over the hip. Check the pelvis, pubic bone and hip bone to level. And stretch the neck away. So just try not to hold your breath when you're doing this. Make sure you're breathing. And if you find that this is too much, obviously, we can go back to just sliding the leg across the floor. But this should be okay just to keep practicing. You're not going to really do any harm. But if you feel like you're really moving in the pelvis and you're not yet able to stabilize and keep the socket still as we move in the hip, then we can just put the foot back on the floor. Try not to hold tension in your upper body. Breathe. Focusing on that ball joint, rolling in the socket. And then bend and pop that foot down. So now we're going to take the left leg back up. Again, just try to keep that pelvis nice and still. Just breathe. And this time we're going to open the knee out to the side. Just like we did with the foot on the floor. But we're going to open it out to the side with the legs. And we're going to support the weight of the leg. Bring it in and out. So again, as the leg goes out to the side, you might be tempted to feel the whole of your pelvis to roll in that direction. Your challenge is to keep the pelvis stable. So you can move your leg without the whole of your pelvis having to move. So the movement comes into that hip joint. Breathe. Try not to tense. Check in. See how your jaw is feeling. And pull again. And two more. And then we can do the other side. So the other side might feel completely different. And that's Okay, because each half of your pelvis will be used differently by you in your daily activities or when you're riding. You might find that one side you have much more control over that side than the leg and the ball spins better in that direction. And you kind of start to understand, well, if I have less stability on one side, how does that affect my movement, how does that affect my ability to support the horse's movement or allow the horse's movement? 
So when that knee's opening out, again, I want my pelvis to stay still so that the socket that the hip wall joint is in can support the movement of my neck. Good. Again, this is our hip dissociation. And for riders, this is a this is a useful skill to kind of understand and practice so that when you're mounted, you have the awareness of what how you're moving in your hips. I often hear instructors ask people to relax your hips, move more in your hips. And if we're not even sure where our hips are, that can be interpreted in a very kind of random way from one person to the next. Good. Two more. Open the leg out. Breathing. And then the leg goes down. Very good. So then we're going to go back to the left leg again, and we're going to move the hip in a circling action. So we're going to keep the knee bent, again, as a level one class. We don't want to kind of push too much beyond yeah, the, we want to keep it in a, we want to keep it controlled. So the movement quality is there. So maintain your pelvic position. We're going to circle. So imagine you've got like a pen on the tip of your knee and you're going to circle it by drawing a circle on the ceiling. And again, we want the hip joint to be where the movement is happening, not the whole pelvis moving. We're still working on that hip dissociation. Pelvic stability. Are you breathing? Change the direction. Circle the leg out. Drawing a circle on the ceiling. Or even think about right in the joint, think about the ball stirring in the socket. Good. Breathe. And then the leg comes back and we pop the foot down. Good. So you may be feeling some work in some of the muscles around there, so in the thigh, around the hip, or even around at the back of the pelvis. All of the muscles that move our hip aren't just kind of in the surface, they're all deep related into the pelvic floor and adductors, all of the muscles around that area. So you know, if you're feeling it somewhere, it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It's just feedback, take note on it, and um, as long as it's not painful, you keep going. So, right leg comes up this time. We've got the pen on the top of the knee, and we're going to circle that knee round, circling to draw the perfect circle on the ceiling. Now, this takes some concentration. So possibly you should stop breathing now. Can you breathe as you move that hip? Is your pelvis staying quiet? And then we're going to go in the other direction. Circle the thigh. So we're circling in that hip joint, just moving it around. And sometimes we go, oh, you know, that's really hard because we don't go into those spaces regularly. And even as riders, we don't often kind of explore all the different spaces in the hip. But if we can make them accessible, it makes all of our activities, sports, whether you want to ride, run, whether you want to, you know, climb a mountain, 
the more agile or more mobility we have in the joints, the more choices we have. Place that leg down. Good. And then just plug your knees into the chest. Bringing your thighs towards the body and just taking a breath. Good. So just thinking about the hips and we want to just challenge and strengthen some of the muscles at the side of the pelvis. So these muscles at the side are more responsible for external rotation in the hip, which um, if you can just straighten your top leg out for me, lying on your side, have your toe pointing forward. If I asked you to turn your toe and your knee up to the ceiling, that's external rotation. And this is harder because what you might want to do is roll backwards. So you've got to keep, again, your pelvic half still, because we're still working on hip dissociation in today's class. And we're going to turn the toe up and then turn it forward. Turn it up and turn it forward. The toe turns up. The toe turns forward, turning up and forwards. And again, we know where the hip joint is. That's where the movement should be coming from. Yeah, turning in the hip. The pelvis stays still. We've just got the socket that that wall joint is sitting in. We don't need that to move because I'm trying to dissociate that movement just working in the hip. Turning forward and turning up. Forward and up. Forward and up and forward and up. Then bend the knee and have it on, stacked on top of your bottom leg. And then keep your ankles together and just lift the top knee out, up. Again, this is external rotation. Just watch that you know, that bone in front of your pelvis it doesn't move backwards with you. Keep it so this bone and this bone are still in alignment and you're through the bone. Then just open that top knee and close it. Again, this is still hip dissociation. So I'm working the muscles at the back of the pelvis that move the hip joint. So as they contract, they're going to rotate the hip out, and when they release, I can bring my leg back. We open out and bring them down, open out and bring them down. Good, open and close and open and close. Just hands on your pelvis if it helps you to. Give feedback where your pelvis is. That doesn't have to move. Just in that wall joint. Opening out. Two more times. Open out and in. Good. Now, I want you to just bring your knees more in like a seated position. Maybe not higher than your hips, but the knees just in front. And again, just check that your pelvis hasn't dropped forwards or rolled back. And then you're going to lift your whole leg up and bring it down. The whole leg up and bring it down. Good. Lifting up and down. Lifting up and down. Good. Up and down. And lift and lower two more and lift and lower and lift and lower. Now I want you to lift the leg, don't let your pelvis roll back. And then you're going to bring your knee to tap the knee, the foot is high. This is internal rotation of your hip. And then toe and knee up. So knee to knee. Toe to toe, knee to knee, toe to toe, knee to knee, 
toe to toe, knee to knee, toe to toe, knee to knee and pulse it. So give me eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, out, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Get the leg come down. Or oh, maybe give yourself a little tap there, a little tap. Around that area. If you're feeling the work that's happened in those muscles, muscles that move your hip joint. Okay. Good. We need to do all of that on the other side. So you can just spin around, lay down on the other side, head supported on the arm, and we're going to be first with the bottom leg bend. You're going to have your pelvis stacked so we're not rolling back and forwards. The first thing is we're going to straighten the top leg out and really feel like the, the, from the hip, your thigh bone is being pulled away so we would length here yeah we don't want the waistline to collapse we've got the hips set now just flex the foot and then turn the foot up to the ceiling and then turn it forward turn it up to the ceiling and forward now you need to watch that we're not just dropping the pelvis back when we do this we're trying to isolate that movement into that little hip joint and you're breathing as you move, turning out, forward, out, and forward, turning up and forward. Very good. Two more times, turn it up and forward, turn it up and forward. Both knees come together. Again, checking your pelvic position. And we're just going to, we know where the hip is here. And that's where the ball joint moves to open. You'll feel all the work here. Okay, this is your muscle working. The joint movement is here. And again, open out and close. Open out and close. And please don't worry about how high your leg is going. What's quite interesting is to compare as one move more than the other. That's a really nice kind of thing to kind of look at in your own body. But certainly don't compare what movement you have to what somebody else has. Okay, because you need to be more about what's happening in the body. What, what joint maybe do I need to work more on to allow me to move better? Rather than, you know, I want my leg to go higher, so I'm just going to do this and just roll back. Yeah, that looks like I've got a bigger range, but actually, within my hip, there isn't that range. And we want to make those muscles stronger. Mine are hurting. <laughs> Good, two more. And one more. Good. Then we're going to bring the knees up a little bit. And can you see I've got almost like a 90 degree angle here. I haven't kind of tucked my legs in. I've just brought my thigh more kind of in line with the hip. Maybe just below. Then keeping this pelvis parallel so we're not rolling back. We then lift the top leg up. And down, and up, and down, lift, and lower, lift, lower, and breathe, lift, and lower, good, and again, four, and three, and two, and hold it up, 
we internally rotate, and then we externally rotate. So toe to toe, knee to knee. 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 Good. Open, tap, open, tap, open, tap, and pulse for eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Open, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let the leg come down and breathe. Hopefully you're breathing throughout that. And give your leg a little tap. You can shake the leg out. Give a little tap, releasing any sort of tension. And then shake. Good. And then we're just going to come up, come round, and we'll see if knees allow you to sit like this. That's okay, but if not, we're just going to go into a child's pose just to stretch out through the back of the pelvis. So, child's pose again may look different in one person to the other. So, if the knees are an issue and because of tightness here, you can have the sit bones up and behind you, it's just in this position, so we get a nice stretch. Or you can get deeper by sitting back on the heels if your joints allow. Just be kind to yourself, don't force the movement. And you can just rest the head on the hands there. Taking some nice deep breaths, relaxing, releasing. Perfect. There we go. Quick half hour, a little bit of strength and mobility for your hip joints. Um, any questions, let me know, but you are going to get the recording, so if you want to kind of keep working on that, just keep repeating it two or three times a week, and um, so you'll have the recording for two weeks, and I'm going to keep throwing out classes this month all about the hip joints, um, and so do sort of look to do some progressive classes as well, the level twos, if you found that one easy. Level two is not so easy, but um, we all like a challenge. Thank you, ladies, for joining me live. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.